G'day everybody, welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags, episode 11, it's legs 11 time and who better to bring to the show, none other than the lady herself, let me just get her there, there she is, legs 11, the best legs in the business, Margie Ango, Margie! <laughs> so Gordy, how are you? <laughs> uh, I am absolutely wrapped and I am so wrapped, Marg, that I brought out my best hat for you. Well, I'm not sure about that, um, so it's, uh, Gordy. It looks all right, but I don't know whether it's your best effort. I, I thought this one you oh, would Oh, hang on. Is that a bow in the front? Yes, darling. It's a bow. Oh, beautiful. Ah, that's, what? yeah, okay. Nice. All You're right. happy with that? We can start on the right foot <laughs> or um, the left. Yeah, not the left. I, um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty pleased to have you on. I've... I, 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 you're a very special lady to me, Marg, even though, do you know what, you know, we've, our association has never been as coach or player, um, but we have had a really special history and I'm going to get to that a little bit later. I want to talk about a very um, important moment I think you and I had in our time some 20 years ago, but let's let's start with you and I hope you don't mind because I think you look superb, but um, have you just turned the big eight zero? I have. Oh. Now, I didn't want anyone to know. Oh. I had, <laughs> thanks, Gordy. Had the, had the, I only had a small party organised, but that had to be put on hold. So, is, And is that I, because of COVID? Yeah, yeah. I only had a, a best friends and family only, I shouldn't say that, which is just what I wanted. First, I didn't want anything, but then um, I agreed to that. Then they decided the family thought it wasn't a good idea because of the um, virus, so we decided. So the next time I'll be still 80 on the 19th of March next year. Right. It's Good Friday. Right. And if anyone's religious, they might, mightn't come, but we thought we'd have a show Good Friday before I turn into the next next one. <laughs> oh, and you know what, Marg? I, we, we best be out of this bloody COVID existence by then, mm. I tell you. You would hope so, and, and I, you know, I'm confident that we will. I think things are progressing, and um, but just it's just a different life, um, Gordy, isn't it? Yeah, at the moment, I, it, it's extraordinary. It's extra well, and there are good bits and bad bits to it. So I think you just got to try and find the the positive, don't you? Hey, yeah. um, let's let's go back to your early days of netball. What got you into netball? What? What? I mean, you you but you're an absolute legend of South Australia, <laughs> without a doubt. Like you can't walk in to that state and people not know you. But what what attracted you right at the start? Um, I started at primary school, I was in year six, and uh, this girl in year seven was the, be um, the best, um, most impressive, prettiest, nicest <laughs> girl, very skillful as well and played netball. And then um, I, I knew her sister, her younger sister, so they asked me to come out in the year seven um, to play in the Year 7 primary schools competition, and I did. And uh, I just absolutely loved that I went through the United Church Association, playing captain, coach. We used to go to Victoria and play the Victorian churches right. in a carnival. And you won't believe this, Gordy, but the captain, um, Cheryl Randalls, was 21, and I was 21, the South Australian captain, Every Christmas, we have never failed to send a Christmas card and a letter. Um, it's 50 years. It's amazing. Absolutely. Oh. It could be a bit, actually. Yeah. Um, it's, it was just amazing. And we always send a little letter at Christmas time. So you make lifelong friends in this game. Oh, and do you know what? That has been, as you say that, that for me, without a doubt, in all of these gas bags that I've been doing, has just been this resignating sort of point that mm. the friendships that come from this great game, which we all get into for one reason or, or another, and we all achieve for various levels or whatnot, but the, the underlining thing has been the friendships. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they, you mightn't see everybody, um, or you don't see everybody, a lot of these people very much, but there's always that, particularly for me in club land, in, in, at, uh, at Contacts, my favourite um, you know, netball team of, of, of ever. Um, but those girls that I had through the, the years, we still catch up. And I think Harbs mentioned it the other night, you know, they came over this. Now we're coming. We used to go over for, you know, 
energetic marriages and that. Now we come over, not divorces, thank goodness, yeah. but, and, we, and not even babies anymore, but, you know, grandchildren. I'm coaching their grandchildren now, <laughs> Gordy. Well, you uh, look good. You look good. Gosh. Hey, listen, I want to ask you, you know, back in those early days, and because I've had this chat with Keely Devery uh, last night, actually, um, what were your uniforms like when you used to play back in the early day? When I, well, when I played, they were um, box pleated <laughs> tunics. So that, let's not go back any further than that. <laughs> with a sash. With a, a what, sash. What about some girdle? a girdle? Golden sash. Girdles? No, <laughs> sorry, not a sash, sat- a girdle that we used to fiddle with and play wood with all the time when the ball was down the other end. Um, then we graduated to skirts and tops and I remember at, um, at Contacts, we first started with a, oh, my goodness, a fawn pleated skirt and a blue top. Oh. The colours were very, very ordinary, but um, but now they've gone to beautiful uniforms and uh, things like that. But over the years, they've um, certainly improved from the box pleat. Hey, I want to chat to you about contacts in a second, but you, and you, I mean, being a head coach, you've got to be able to coach across the court. But you really were you you pride yourself on on I think being a, a top defensive coach. You. you any team that you coached was tough defensively, without a doubt. You were a defender. You played. Did you play goal defence? Yes, I did. I loved that position. Played goal defence, and um, then when we started, when we stopped playing as um, state teams or whatever you like to call it, rep sides, I was a bit short, so I went into the centre as captain, coach, and centre. And centre. And, and centre. <laughs> Captain coach and centre. One one week I missed it. I was playing with a couple of Australian um, ex Australian players. We had a, a, a team that we played at a Marion Rec Centre, and one day I didn't get there. And uh, this like one of the opposition said, "Ah, oh, no, you lost. You lost your main one. The captain, coach, and centre today." <laughs> I, like I really that. loved. I loved centre, but goal defence defensively. Yeah, I'm, I love the defence, and I think. You know, I have a look at what the goalers are doing and I think, now, how can I combat that? What can I teach to make that not happen? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and I've always, you know, you know, like Harbs, I've said to her once, what's the most important thing about defence? And she said, getting the ball before it gets to the circle. And I've just always liked that attacking defender. Yeah, and, and she spoke of, I mean, you, you probably watched her the other night. Why wouldn't you? Because what a champion. But she did speak, Margie, about that one thing that you gave her and that was um, you didn't try to box her, you let her go out and you let her do what she needed to do. Yeah, I, I thought I had to do that, but there were many um, trips down the coffee shop, as um, as I've said, but her and, and another one um, that was very free was Jackie Delaney. Yeah. Um, if I tried to change their styles, I would have messed them up, I'm sure, but... Now and again, when you had a game play, play, plan and it sort of went out the window very, very quickly with the Delaney, but Harvey, Harvey and Sutz too, Sarah Sutter, they yeah. were a great defence line. As, and there was another great defence line, I'm a bit mad on the defenders, as you know, another one, and it was um, Janine Illich and Liz Tavener, was it? Yes, yes. Liz in front. Yep. That, that was another great defence line that I thought was really good. There's plenty of others too. but yep. um, Lizzie, Lizzie yeah. Boniello, as she's now known, but they, yeah, that was it. your Victorian defence line that you would have come yes. up against and, and yeah. both went on to, to play for Australia. Hey, um. We, when you were coming through, I mean, you, your coaching, like it, it's really interesting how your coaching evolved as the netball competitions evolved. So, because there was a really, like I vividly remember, it's such an, a solid um, period of time where the South Australia State League, let's say, the S, I'm not sure what it's called, the SA, whatever, but that State League was without doubt the best competition there was in the country. It was so strong, Margie. But there were two yeah. clubs, weren't they, that dominated? Yeah, two clubs that dominated were Garville and um, and Contacts. And um, we went on, you know, battle, battle, tooth, nail and everything for about nine years in a row. Um, yeah. And with, with the, you know, at the end of time, full time, it would often be a draw. 
or it'd be one, somebody's won by one or somebody's lost by two. So, um, and I, I was, un, I'm un, I understand that people actually were at dinner parties because we were televised on a, a Saturday night even. In, yeah. In and people would go leave their dinner party at 10 o'clock to see the contacts Garville, whatever it was called, um, netball or sometimes they were just waiting for a bit of biffo to happen, but it didn't. <laughs> It didn't. We're very, very fierce rivals, but um, we're it's only a bit of biffo, not much. But, the, you know, and the, even to the point that wasn't one of your grand finals, like, sold out, like, eight, ten thousand 10,000 people or something at a state league grand final? Yeah, it was. Down at the old powerhouse, it was called, and um, it was just amazing to walk in there. And, and if, if you can just imagine that, like... Half were Garville and half were contacts. And so they were all trying to outdo each other. Mm. It was absolutely such a, the, kid, the girls would just love playing it. It was just unbelievable. It's something that will never be, you know, will never happen again in Premier yeah. League. It happen in, for, happens for Australian teams, but not, not for, um, for us in a Premier competition. Yeah. Tell, tell me, how did, how did contacts evolve for you? Why contacts? I was in the United Church Association and coaching oh, over there at that stage. Are you a church girl? No. <laughs> no, but I had to go to church if I wanted to play netball. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I'm just shocked. <laughs> no, no, I know. It was just one of those things and I... We, in those days, if we'd have left the United Church Association, we, we had to stand our net all a year before we could go over over the road. Right. And um, so I so I didn't play. I played in their night state teams, the South Australian night team things. But um, yeah, I um, had done fairly well in the church association, and um, the I think he was the treasurer of Contacts Netball Club. Rang me and said, "Would I like to do Contacts?" And um, oh, because we. We, um, I knew all about them and everything because we trained against them, the, the state sides and that. But um, yeah, and I said, where you know, where are they on the premiership? He said, well, we're bottom, about to be relegated. And I thought, well, that's not a bad way to way to start. Yes. I'm either going to go right, going to get up there, or I'm finished forever. Yes. <laughs> um, within within four years, we played in a grand final against the very mighty tango side with Monica yeah. Callis and all those girls in it. We won, we, we lost by about 25 goals, but you would have thought we'd won, Gordy. It, oh, really? it was just amazing. And then um, we went on to, then Garville came into and yeah. had so many wonderful players and uh, um, so we always had great battles with them. But, yeah, that's sort of how I started, got involved. Yeah. And the first... First year, I, I reckon Netball Australia, uh, SA needed a new coach. Bronwyn Roberts was there before me. She wasn't going to do it. And I thought these players that, that in the state side were very good players by then too. And uh, I thought, oh, we'll just have someone in there. Why don't we give Margie Ango a go? And so went up to Brisbane and that's where, uh, and we won. And, we, and I thought, gee, this is easy, this. This <laughs> national com state competition, that's what was our biggest comp in those days. Huh, how easy is this, you know? And um, so we won that year, we won the next year. Then it sort of got a bit harder after that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, so I think I coached the state side for about 10 years and as well as those coaching contacts. Yeah, and, and then it kind of turned... And then, then life changed again, didn't it? And the Adelaide Thunderbirds... Absolutely. Evolved. Yeah. And you, um, were, you, you were the inaugural coach of the Thunderbirds? Yes, and, 19, and I, yeah, 97. Yeah, and I kind of think, like, given, like, at that time, and given, I guess, um, just the significance of players that came through South Australia, like, I don't think, and this is something that's really come through with all Gordy's gas bags, there is a long list of players that people want me to catch up with, and they all seem to be coming from South Australia, which was always yeah. under your era of coaching. Anyway, and I bet a lot of them are defenders too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure whether the goalers thought much of me, but the defenders I did all right with. Oh, I, could, we I were... could catch up with Jackie Delaney. Yeah. Oh, what my about gosh. Mog? What about Mog? C Cassie Moggy? Yeah. C Cassie yeah. Mog? Yeah. Do you remember her? Of course I remember Cassie Mog. 
Oh, she was. She played with Delaney in one of our finals. Yeah. Now you couldn't get two people that were so different. Delaney that didn't follow a game plan, and Cassie Mogg had it mapped out for a week. <laughs> so Love every it. time the ball's coming, if you can imagine, Gordy, the ball's coming down. Moggy makes a slow lead out to the side. Delaney then cuts her straight off. So Moggy does the Queen Mary turn and goes back in the circle. So the, Delaney throws the ball to the wing attack. And what happens? No, here comes Moggy again. Who cuts her off? Delaney cuts her off straight away. So Moggy makes another move right in the circle. And Moggy has got two Thunderbirds premierships under her belt. Extraordinary. She was the perfect foil for Delaney. Yeah, and, and Delaney could put in 50 goals a game. Yeah, or, or minus 10. Yeah. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> no, she sometimes halves would say to me if... Um, if, if, Jack, if Jackie's on today, we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll get this one and things like that. But she was just a different person, so talented, didn't even yeah. know how good she was. Yeah, yeah. She was just, um, I don't know, she was one of those players you used to watch and you, you just, you, I don't know, you remember some, uh, Bianca Franklin? Can you remember Bianca yes. Franklin? Bianca Franklin was another player, for those of you out there, West Australian girl, brother, buddy Franklin, who when you placed her on the court, you just watched and thought, when you start trying, because she just looked like everything was so easy and graceful. Mm. And I th- yes. Delaney, for me, was a bit like that as well in the sense that, you know, you, you just kind of looked and go, how did she get from there to there? Or That's you right. just, You'd have to, you know, look at, rewind the video. Can't remember yeah. how she got there. Let me have yeah. another look. Oh, oh, is that how she got there? No, she was, um, she was very good and natural, like yeah. Harbs, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it was good. Yeah. Tell me, tell me something funny about Kath Harbs. I actually know a story about Kath Harbs with you. Tell Harbs, me if you know uh, this one. What about when her dad came across you when she was very young and said, yeah, I want well, to look at my daughter? She came out, we were training on the, we used to train outside, obviously, played outside as well, train on the outside United Church courts. And um, this gentleman came along with a couple of beautiful dogs and um, obviously Harbs that was it, and uh, he said, I'm not going to tell you my daughter's age because she's too good for her age. So um, she needs to play higher. So, oh, it's like, that, you just don't say that. You Is know, that red rag to a bull? Horrible Margaret Engo. Oh, anyhow, so sort of like, is that so? So I put her in the, I think I put her in the, the same uh, same age bracket, but in the second team. Didn't play oh. her in the top side. Oh, dear. So, <laughs> and then it went on like that. She came, actually, Harbs came through our ranks. She played um, juniors and uh, inters and then reserves. She played in a reserves premiership before she hit the big time. But she certainly hit the big time as a young person. She was only about 17 when we won our first premiership. Uh, with her yeah. and um, such, so she was um, she was really good. And what and what? Let's go to the the you know your Adelaide Thunderbirds, uh, I guess time because the Ravens were weren't the Ravens involved then as well? Yes, we played. We had the two teams. That's split right. our eight clubs. Um, they were you know one here, one there. Da 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 da. So we had four teams to choose from. Ravens had four and we had four. And um, so we, yeah, that's how it started. Um, we had some really hard games again. I, I remember one game that we won, it was an, uh, one of the ones we won in the a grand final national championships and it was at home in Adelaide. So that was huge, absolutely big and mm. at Edsa Park or Priceline Stadium as it's called now. And we'd ordered, the, our people had ordered a um, band for later so, oh, we, so wow. well, anyhow, we had a, it was a great game. We won, played really well um, against Garbola and won. We, did, we lost some of them too, don't worry. But this one we won and it was like mayhem. I can remember the band there. I can remember Kathy Nelson, my manager, taking one of the band's hats off like yours, putting it on her head and halves and they wouldn't get off the stage. They were singing Honky Tonk Woman and all that sort of stuff. And uh, honestly... The band was, they were wonderful. I think they were so glad when we went. They were just, we were just. Oh, really? empty. But it was just fantastic, um, Gordy, to see the younger kids and all the other kids that didn't get as much court time or having a great time. Mm. They all joined mm. in and it was just fantastic because this is a team game, netball. I, I keep saying you can't, 
take the centre pass, give it to yourself, run down the court and shoot a goal. Mm. It's the greatest mm. team game that you can have, particularly with the restrictions. You can't do it on your own. Yeah. So, yeah. And these days I just wish there's a few less passes going down the court. But <laughs> never mind, we won't go well, down there. Well, we still, we, you, you still attend the Suncorp Super Netball Games because I know when I've been over in Adelaide, I've seen you there um, when I've yes. commentated a Thunderbirds game. You don't, you don't miss a game. No, no, I, I'm very lucky as Australia still asked me to be a selector yep. of the, uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I'll yeah. probably get some nasty letters or something now, but I'm not the only one. Yeah. And I see you there looking absolutely fabulous with your hair all done and your makeup and everything. No, it's, but, um, it's yeah, almost I love going. I, I do enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I do enjoy going to it and uh, still follow our Premier League too. And, yeah. Um, you know, and as you said before, I've, you know, South Australia have done some really good things. In fact, last year, I think it was, we won Sapsasa. Yes. We won schoolgirls. We won 17s. We won 19s. So we want to see something there that's coming through to the Thunderbirds. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think I, I was saying <clears throat> only the other day with Nat Von Birdo, obviously, it's really nice to see Tanya Obst. South Australian yeah. girl sitting there. You've got Nat coming through. It's nice to have some of that pride and joy of South Australia at the helm. Yeah, I'm just talking about um, Tanya. Her and, and Sarah Bidmar played together in goals at Contacts and you have never seen better. You talk about Avellino. They were like her with their hands. Yeah. They were just yeah. so skillful, both of them, when they passed. So Tanya has done really well to come through. I'm very happy for her. And, um, you know, like everyone else, I'd like to see more South Australians in the team, but then that'll come. That'll yeah, come, that'll, I'm sure, because yeah, she's yeah, certainly I, a I South Australian. I have no doubt. Marg, I want to go back to our moment. Yes, I can, re I can remember it as clear as anything. So when we were paired off, yes. paired off to have a bit of conversation about our lives and where we were going and... What we each thought the other should do. That's right. We were in camp. Let's just set this up for everyone. So we were in Canberra. I was, try I was trying to think. I reckon I was around about uh, 27, maybe. I don't know. That's 21 years ago or so. So, and we'd been, there was a group of people selected uh, yeah. from around the country of various uh, influences, I guess, coaches, players, young, old, then there was the AIS yeah. people. And it was all about where's netball going. And we all got flown into Canberra and we were placed, uh, I remember, in the middle of nowhere because I remember when I rocked Absolutely. up. Yeah. Right? We were in the middle of nowhere, you're right. <laughs> and you're right. And they wanted us to all kind of get to know each other before we went out on this, you know, two days of let's drive the future of netball forward. And you and I were paired up. And we had to talk about our futures and our fears. And off we walked into the bush, <laughs> you and I. <laughs> yeah, I've got, still got this in my mind, no, Gordy. No, I can no, still we, picture it. You have no idea. It sits with me very dearly in my heart, that moment. Because for me, I mean, I, I didn't know you that well at the time. So you and I were only really, I guess, establishing our, our friendship. But yeah, who went? Can you remember who went first? Was it you or me? I, I think, think me. I think, it was I, think I, I think it was you. Yeah. yeah. And my question to you was, can you remember it? Give me a clue. Okay, because I said to you, I'm, I'm really, sure. I'm at a stage where I'm not yes. sure which direction. Sure, which path to take. Yeah. Right. And I think in the end I, end, I did it really well because I told you to take both of them. <laughs> Till one worked out better than the other. <laughs> <laughs> one was one was sorry, Sue. Yeah, no, no. One was um, coaching and one was um, media stuff, wasn't it? Correct. So, and just imagine you've been a successful coach, and and then media wise, will you right on top of the group? But so you, you, I, I was right. You were both right. ways. You were right, and I actually only said to someone at the beginning of this year what a blessing and a privilege my life is at the moment to be able to do the two things I love dearly, and then COVID hit and took both of them away. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, though, turned to me, and this, this moment for me was I was like, oh my goodness, she's gone deep. <laughs> you, you, can you remember what you, are, what you said to me? What no, I can't. So, 
you had the Adelaide Thunderbirds. You were right. you were you knew you were coming towards the end of that. That you couldn't be there forever and a day, and that you wanted to hand it over, and that you'd put so much of your life and your heart and your soul into Adelaide to South Australian netball. And you just was, you were fearful that you would hand over and maybe, you know, things wouldn't, not that it would fall apart. You didn't say that, but you were just like, I just know it's my blood, sweat and tears. It's my baby. How do I know that when I hand it over, I can move on and I'll be happy with it? That's what you asked a 27 year old. (laughs) Can you remember your answer? Yeah, I said, go go in both directions. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I said to you, I said, well, you, you can't. You can't control that. You can't control that. Uh, talking clear. right out of that, I can remember that time well, but another time I can remember, Gordy, this is about you, not me, when I was giving an assessment for your high performance <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, yep, you were fine with me, good defence coach, no worries at all. And I don't know what happened, but... You didn't quite get through that first time. So I don't know what you did that night after they'd give, delivered you. No, you, you need to, you know, go again yeah. at this point in time. I can still see you coming down. It was in Adelaide, I think, coming down the stairs, absolutely fuming the next day because you'd thought about it, having a go at everyone on the way down. And we were, the panel was trying to think now, who will we get to calm down Gordy? And we chose Jill McIntosh because we were, she was the only one that would be okay out of all of this. <laughs> but anyhow, you got through. I, I got through and I do actually recall what made me angry. I don't know that I want to share it on here. Well, yeah, sure, share it. <laughs> Unless it's about me. No, it wasn't about you. Can you remember who the coach was that was invited in to guest oh. work at that high-performance camp? No, I can't. But you tell me and I'll know. Just finished as the Australian Diamonds coach. Tell me. Lisa Alexander. Right. So Lisa oh. came in and requested that we Oh, speak. yes. Yep. Yeah, so she... Re- coming re- back, Gordy. It's yeah, a long way, a long way people, back. I don't know if people will find this interesting, but she had come into... <laughs> um, I was asked to go down and set up... Um, uh, how a wing attack would work through a box defence to hit the circle edge. And on that day, if you recall, Marg, it was 50 degrees just shy of the third day in a row in South Australia and the tree <laughs> had broken down inside the venue and the team that was supposed to turn up, which were elite-level athletes, didn't and so they quickly rang in a young under-14 team who had never put a box defence together in their life. <laughs> And so I moved out onto the court ready to set up my how do you move through a box and I looked at the kids and realised they don't know what a box is. (laughs) So I spent the first part setting the box up and then I got the kids to do what was required based on what Lisa had asked and then Lisa tore shreds off me because I spent too much time on not the actual point of the task. Oh, yeah. And I was pissed off. I didn't like it for it. (laughs) And I'll let everybody know about it. And actually, that's fair enough too. I do remember it was stinking hot yeah. and uh, we've had a few times when athletes haven't been quite at the, lot, at the high level <laughs> and that makes life rather hard for the coach then because you've got to go right back to basics. That's you exactly can't, pro- right. can't go to step four when you haven't been to one and two. I agree. <laughs> Never mind. That was time. Good. Uh, good time. Yeah. I feel like we've just turned this into about me. So let's go back to you. Uh, Margie, who's the most talented player you've ever coached? Well, you know what I'm going to say, Harbs. Without a doubt. Harbs for her um, absolutely ability to read the game. Yeah. I, don't, I couldn't teach her that. Yeah. I, it, it, she just did it. And I've watched videos of, um, you know, when did she do the first move and all stuff like that. But she just, she, and she wouldn't have been able to help you either. It's just built in her. Um, to do so she's... She's the, the best one that um, I've coached. There's been a lot of good defenders in South Australia and Monica Pacalis was another one. Yep. She was another one that was an attacking defender. Michelle Dendeka, obviously, yep. is a different kind of defender. 
but um, very, very, and such a, an athlete. She could have been good at anything that she did. Um, but yeah, Harbs, Harbs was the one, and yeah. probably her her association with Sarah Sutter was pretty good. Yeah. You know, yeah. unfortunately, Sutter. I love her. She's the most, she's the loveliest person. I always went to Sutz if I needed to know something about the team, you know, because um, she would say, no, don't go crooked Alex tonight because she's had a blue with her boyfriend or don't do this, Marg, or whatever. So I, I would know that. But she also didn't know left and right that well. So we played on the outside courts at um, Anzac Highway and it had to be beach or city. So that's which way she had to go. To beach was that way and city was the other. So, <laughs> but uh, Har Harbs was, but she's also intolerant of other players at times too. Um, she, well, so she, that's, acknowledged, she acknowledged that on her chat the other night that she was a straight A shooter and that, you know, not yep. everyone loved that. Yep. She said she'd rather. No, I didn't mind that at all. Than the other. Uh, two, two quick questions for you. Number one, so you've coached a lot of players that have gone on to play for Australia. Who's a player that you coached that maybe didn't go on to play for Australia? Who was, who was one of the best you coached? Probably could have, but uh, didn't. Uh, a young girl called Karen Schultz. Oh, Karen God. Whelan. And, um, she was at the AIS. Yep. Um, then came, you know, when she was really young and then came back because her mum was sick. And uh, she didn't get an Australian jumper. And I would say that... Um, that's upset because she was magnificent. A bit like Shelley O'Donnell though, with the pass, you know, the one in front that we don't do anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, very smart, great captain, very disappointed oh. that she didn't actually get an Australian jumper. And what about, who's been your biggest supporter along your journey? My biggest supporter? Oh, I'd have to say um, my family, David, my husband. Yeah. He's, um, he's never, I've been away, I've been to Africa, South Africa, New Zealand, the Cook Isle, everywhere. And, um, you know, with three kids, um, he's always been very, very happy for me to go. So, uh, yeah, he's been, he's been great. And um, I guess my, all my managers, I've always picked people that have not wanted my job yeah. and wanted to manage a team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's lesson number one from my gang. Don't put someone next to you that wants your gig. <laughs> no, I remember had a, one year I had, um, we were down, you were this, um, Gordy, it was in a world championship, world oh, tournament, and it was in New Zealand. And we'd been out to lunch together uh, as a group, <laughs> and we've nearly missed the start of the game, but we've gone in there. And our, it was a fantastic game. We just we won that one. And um, afterwards, there was an after party. So we've gone to the after party and um, my, my manager, so made me think of it, it's Pauline Edwards, um, my friend, sorry, it was Pauline Edwards, who was a coach of mine and, and also a player. And uh, we've gone, we've got fairly, fairly late into the night and our flight, we had to be at the airport at 4 a.m. So we decided we'd stay up, you know, why wouldn't you? So at the after party, I gave him my departure money, put it in the, our passports and said, look, save that because there's nothing open tomorrow and we won't get out of the country. Yeah. So about, you know, 2, 30, 3 o'clock, she comes up to me and says, Mug, I've just spent all our money so we can't get home. I said, so that's great. So one of our, our I say friends there, she lent me fifty. I think it's fifty dollars each, so we could get out of parts of tax to get out of the country. But um, that was a great time. We had a good time that uh, on, 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 not on the court, but watching the girls and also having yeah. a lot of fun yeah. with a lot of friends. Yeah, it was it, it was a good time. A couple of headaches to go with it, Margie. If I remember. absolutely yes, I remember them. Yeah, mm -hmm. listen, you know what? This has been nothing short of a delight catching up with you yeah yeah as soon as i've rambled on a bit but oh. and I, I did actually do some stuff that i was going to talk about but it doesn't matter does it well mm. what else really got? enjoyed it. i've got time. <laughs> I've got time what else do you want to talk about no i, I was just going to say how much i love being at the south australian sports institute oh sassy. Um, i was there for 10 years and um tried to and i, I just absolutely love that give it having the opportunity of not working in a netball environment, mm. working with other coaches yeah. that all have said the same thing. Our administrators are no good, the da 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 da, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and having these meetings that you learn so much from other coaches. 
And also, Gordy, I came through a real hard school with Norma and Joyce and Margie Cowdo, Gay Teen. Yeah, I, I learned heaps from them. Yeah. You know, I was not, they'd all been Australians. I wasn't, and I always thought I had to do a little bit more. But, um, gee, I, I, I was lucky that era was a tough. And Mark Corbett, another one, an absolutely fantastic coach. So yeah. I learned a lot from all those people. Oh, and I, I hear those names, Marg, and I think for me with Gordy's gas bags, you know, a lot of people are messaging saying, oh, chat to some of the current players. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like we see them all the time. But for me, there's such... Uh, it's just so nice to talk about all these names and what a group of coaches you all were. You know, have a look at the players I'm chatting with and you girls have all, you know, it's because of you, you know. They've, done, they they've all done well in life, Sue. They, yeah. they are, what I say to them, don't just be a good player, be a good citizen. Yeah. But I don't think that went down that all that well. <laughs> But still, we had one support. of those coffees you used to have, was it, with the girls? Oh yeah. Well, Harps used to say, look, she and when she was always a good trainer, she was always very fit. But she didn't like putting her hand up over the ball. She reckons put my hand up over the over the when the girls shooting for goal and the leg out the back. I think it's the most ridiculous thing I have to do. And uh, I say, well, it's not about you, Catherine. <laughs> Poor old Kristen Heinrich gets hands in her face, down her arm, scratches everywhere when she plays, and you don't even try and emulate anything like that. That's not fair. So you gotta, it, it didn't work. She still did the same thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I always could count her on, on halves when you, you know, what we, I remember once we were seven goals down in a final and I made a wonderful change, played her from goalkeeper to goal defence. <laughs> Because I didn't know what else to do. We won by a goal, so everyone thought I was wonderful. Yeah. But she was the one that, that changed. She can change a game, as I've said before. Hey, Margie, over your left shoulder, I can see a lovely photo. My left shoulder? Yes, yes. That's, this is my study, our study. That's my two girls, Jane and Sarah. And then the other side is Simon, played footy for Glenelg, the Tigers. Um, and that, and, and I've got all my netball things, coach of the century, pictures, players of the century, um, and everything here. So I feel very comfortable in this, this little room. You know what? You look very comfortable in that room. Very, um, you, you've had a, you've had an extraordinary career, Margie. Been lucky, been lucky, very lucky. Good support from a family, had good players. And had people that wanted to, you know, they're, they just wanted to enjoy themselves. We played hard and we on and off the court. Mm. That's the way I coached. Yeah, no, and, and that's what they all say about you. And even Keely Devery said to me the other day, geez, I'd love to have been coached by Marg Angove. So, I'd you know, love to coach her too. Yeah, oh, there you go. I, she was one of my favourites, and Keely. Yeah. I, I just thought she was very smart. Yeah. 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 So, no, you, you resignate, mate, and everyone loves you to death. Um, imagine having to, not, not that I'm saying your career is finished, but imagine having to um, add this to your resume, which is you now need to sing karaoke. <laughs> yeah, look, I could really, this show could be at its lowest ebb yeah. from, from me trying to do this. And, and, but that's, but the South Australians just can't go much lower. Well, we are terrible. Well, we? I have to be honest with you, Mark, the bar has been set ex exceptionally low thus far. Um, the old, yeah, how low can you go? How low can you go? Well, I'm hoping it's not lower than Nat Bomberto. Nat, <laughs> I messaged you straight after. <laughs> was oh, no. ha, Harves wasn't that good either. No, oh. Harves, but you know Harves. She, I, I was waiting for Kath to say to me, no, nah, bugger off, Gordy, I'm going, see ya. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised she actually did it. So... You have a chance here to go to the platform right in the middle and take the gold medal. What song? Have you got a song? Have you got a karaoke song? Well, I'm just very quickly, I've got some eras, like eras, you know. Oh, right. yep. The Contacts was simply the best, which yes. Cheryl did, I think, which was yes. fantastic. Yes. Yep. Um, Sassy, Jane Altswagger, ABBA, Time, singing oh. Dancing Queen, wonderful. Oh. Yeah, like that. Um, and what else was there? I've got it written down. Oh, no, I haven't. Um, one of the things that perhaps 
everybody has sung, all of the people that you've had on, yeah. whether they're yeah. mostly Australians or whatever, a Premier League or that have sang, sung this one that I'm going to have a go at. Go for it. We are the champions, my friend, and we'll go on fighting to the end. La, 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 la. We are the champions. We are the champions. No time for losers, but we are the champions of the world. <laughs> Straight to number one, Magingo. <laughs> like that. Straight to number one. <laughs> oh, God, oh, that was fun. <laughs> oh, Marg, honestly, I love you dearly. And this has been nothing short of a blessing. Thank you so much. I know people are going to love this. Uh, we love you. We can't wait to see you courtside at a Suncorp Super Netball game. Let's hope that it's in season 2020. Yeah. Thanks, Gordy, for having me. It's been fantastic. Love yeah. you, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.